chapter one, roll the dice. Fake six, nigga. Sunny G yelled out. The dice would roll, bonks, and land on two threes and a single six. Pay up, niggas. Sunny G told the whole table. Sunny G had been rolling big sixes for the last 20 minutes and had the guys off the five mile in the bull weaver. Heezy grabbed the dice. Nah, low bro. Let me roll them shit, Big Miles told Heezy. Big Miles would shake the dice up, blow into his hands, and let the dice fly into the air. Two of the dice landed on the five. The last dice hit the corners, and it spun in circles for a long five seconds. Trumps, nigga. Pin me double, Big Miles said with a smirk. And just like that, Sonny G had lost the $40,000. Him losing the $40,000 wasn't the problem. He just robbed a nigga out of his own neighborhood in the Four Mile area for $5,000. He lost that with the $40,000. No way he could go back to his hood with beef going on and with no money. D-Max saw the look in Sonny G's eye and pulled out his 25-shot 4-5 Glock. Lil' Purple pulled out a 30-round 9mm and Sonny G pulled out a chrome 4-5. Y'all niggas know what's up, Sonny G told them smiling. Big Miles, Heezy, and Lil' Warren would put all the money on the table because they respected that iron like any other human. Sonny G, Lil' Purple, and D-Mac would grab the cash and run out the back door. Upon jumping off the porch, they hadn't realized that the backyard was full of known savages off the five mile. A big gunfight would take place as Sonny G and the guys unloaded their clips while they were running and jumping fences. There were too many shots being ranged out. The guys on both sides had to stop shooting before they hit a teammate. Sonny G and the guys would make it back to the full mile area where they would smoke 3.5 purple blunts and laugh at the five shootouts they've been in in the last week. Hey, y'all, boy. Y'all know that little nigga from Back to Green who been in that last episode of Murder Stories? Remember he smoked his up and his frame? Well, that little nigga got the pounds, and he live on the back street. Sonny G and the guys would be parked on full mile, waiting for the youngin to come out. When he came out, D-Mac put the 9mm to his face. Get the fuck in the car. You ain't even know that nigga you killed from back to green was my uncle. You thought your ass was stuck off and there's no in it. Boom. D-Mac hit him in the head with the 9mm hollow point round and dropped his body off in front of the 5 mile store. Chapter 2. Been doing this. Man, listen. I know them niggas stay scrapped, but if we come with supreme firepower, them nigga hit. Big Miles tried to explain. Boy, we dead man's walking if we think we about to slide to that dead end. Heezy told him. That why somebody got to be on foot, fool. Lil Warren stated. Sunny G, Lil Purple, and D-Mac would be standing in the front yard on high alert. Tonight, they had their pistols in the grass and the assault rifles in their hand. They done had jacked about 11 hoods out of the 20-something neighborhoods in Charleston. So that mean many other savages wanted their heads. Hey, bro, let me get a 20 hard. I got you, bro. Just come to the gate, Low Purple told them. As Low Purple looked down to pop the crack into pieces, his life turned black. He didn't hear the sound. I'll see the flash. Boom. Heezy sent the hollow point through the top of Low Purple's head. Instantly, Sonny G and D-Mac would begin to fire their AK-47 style rifles at Low Heezy, who they thought was a junkie. Heezy was fast on his feet, so Sonny G and D-Mac couldn't get a good aim. Just as Heezy disappeared to the night, a black SUV would pull up 10 seconds later, and Lil' Warren would jump out 
and empty his 50 shot Glock at Sunny G and D Mac. The SUV would stop at the corner to let Heezy back in. Big Miles, Heezy, and Lil Warren would drive only two minutes up the street to lay low in their neighborhood, the Five Mile. Four days later, if you find out exactly what house they be in, I got you three stacks, Sonny G told the young teen on Five Mile. The youngin would go get the locations, and when he came back, he would give Sonny G the drops. Boom, 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 boom. Sonny G shot the little guy eight times, but he manages to survive at the hospital. Later on that night, Sonny G and D-Mac would ride past the trap house on the five mile. When they saw Lil' Warren sitting on the porch by himself, D-Mac would bail out the car, already shooting. Lil' Warren couldn't take the assault weapons gunfire, and he tried to run through the cut. When he made it to the backyard, he would jump the fence and come out on the next street. To her surprise, D-Mac was still gunning for him. Lil' Warren was jumping many fences just for D-Mac to pop out from random areas and send hot rifle shells at him. A 5.56 five, round finally struck him in the neck before he could collapse. D-Mac tapped the trigger once more, striking Lil' Warren in the back of his head. D-Mac ran out on the next street to find Sonny G looking for him. Hey, hey, hop in, nigga, hop in, Sonny G said in a hurried tone. And with that, the guys would drive like four minutes back to their neighborhood, the full mile. Chapter three, don't cry now. Big Miles would be trapping in front of the corner store. It was a cold rainy night and Big Miles had just parked his car a few streets down. So if something jumped off, his car would not be on scene. As Big Miles walked back to his car, Sonny G and D-Mac would jump out the cut and try to get him. But Big Miles had seen them from 100 yards away. So Big Miles would squeeze on his fully automatic Glock, emptying 30 bullets and striking D-Mac in his chest, neck, jaw, and nose. D-Mac was dead before he hit the ground. Sonny G tried to shoot back, but Miles had three clips on him, so Sonny G had to retreat. As Sonny G was running off, a hollow point bullet would struck him in the shoulder as he jumped the gate. Sonny G was wounded, sober, and broke. Sonny G was on his last, literally. Sonny G only had a gun left and $200 to his name and an ounce of purple cush. Sonny G could not sleep at night because for one, he was wounded and could not go to the hospital. And for two, he did not know when Karma would come kicking down the door and bust his head open or take him to prison for life. And e. G decided to walk to one of his little birdies houses from downtown. He figured since she was a nurse, she could fix him up real good. When Skinny G got to the house, the girl named Brianna would take care of his wounds. All right, I'm about to grab you some water. Skinny G would be standing in the bathroom, looking in the mirror. He couldn't believe he was the only one left out of the circle. When the door to the bathroom opened, he thought it was Brianna. You know, baby, I'm about to move far away and start a new life. Skinny G said, looking at the floor. No, your bitch ass ain't, the man voice said. Turn around, look me in my eyes. You know who I is, nigga. Instantly, Skinny G noticed how much the old man had looked like the youngin that he had killed from back to green. Put these handcuffs on, pussy. You coming with me, the older guy said, and pistol whipped Skinny G. And by the way, how the fuck you didn't know Brianna and my son are related. They are identical twins, nigga. Look at the eyes and the mole on both their foreheads. Big Miles would have the seat reclined all the way back in Kreisha's living room. Kreisha was throwing her head game on Big Miles like a goat. 
Keisha would put Big Miles all the way to the back of her throat with consistency. Within 45 seconds, spit gloves would begin to wet her hands up. In 90 seconds, the bed was covered with saliva. Within an hour, she made Big Miles bust a walnut-sized cup of warm jizz in her face and mouth. Cretia would use her finger to scrape the jizz off her face and put it in her mouth like a pro. Damn, baby, I see why Hazy be going crazy over your ass. Hazy couldn't believe his eyes as he sat at the window. He knew for sure Cretia never blew him like that. Not only that, he thought Cretia didn't even like the taste of cum. Heezy would unlock the back door and walk into the living room while they were getting dressed. Before Big Miles or Cretia could say anything, he shot them both more than eight times, then spat in Big Miles' face. The spit on Big Miles' face would be DNA evidence at Heezy's trial. He would be tried and convicted. He would be sentenced to two life sentences plus five years for the gun. And just like that, in a matter of weeks and months, six people died. This ain't a real story, but this just a little fake story. But I still be trying to show y'all how them boy be rocking in Charleston. You see why he's saying them boy be doubling back within a couple days. You see why he's saying whole groups of teenagers and 20-year-olds be getting murked within months apart. You see why he's saying you can watch a whole group of people grow up. You see why he's saying let's say you about 21 and you watch a group of teenagers grow up by the time you 28 and you had no about 10 teenagers who used to be together by the time a 21 year old turned 28. He only wanted them boy who made it to the age of 21. And that's facts. That's your boy Marlo. I out.